so I love to take naps. But lately, it's been really hard to find a good place to do that. So in today's video, my challenge is going to be to build a day bed for our sunroom so I have an awesome place to take naps. I'm thinking the bed will go right here in the corner so you can lay back, look out the window, and enjoy the view. The design concept for this bed is actually pretty simple. I wanted to make a castle joint out of a stone and then make the final three legs out of heavy timbers. <laughs> now that I've got the design done, let's see if the wife likes it. So here's the idea. We got the rock at the corner. So if y'all aren't familiar with micro expressions, right here she's flashing disgust. Not exactly the emotion you want while presenting a design. You really need to learn how to read the room. We got three posts it would be what I would make from the logs we have outside. I've got some tension rope here to create an area to hold pillows. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like the rock. And I don't mean Dwayne Johnson. I just don't like it. <laughs> Do you have a second model? This one, I was playing with smaller pieces here. Okay, so I basically didn't... you have one idea and you're gonna do <laughs> it, whether or not I like it. No, that's not the case. Really? So I was actually pretty familiar with this tree in an interesting way, but my dad insisted on cutting it down because he wanted to expand his pond. So I happily took the logs. Believe it or not, it only took me one cut to screw everything up. Oh man, I'm so mad right now. I cut this log at 25 inches instead of two foot five, and I didn't have any extra logs. I went back to the drawing board. I think I can pull this thing together. It's gonna be a little bit different, but I think I can make it work. I'm still pretty frustrated at myself, but that's why you go to the metric system. I've used this technique a few times, and it actually works pretty good with this little electric chainsaw. So this was a cottonwood tree, so I thought the grain would look dumb like poplar, but it actually looked really cool. Interesting grain here, eh? Once I have one flat edge, I'll use my squares to mark out the next cuts. I'll start the cut on the end, and then use that to establish a square cut down the length of the log. And it's somewhat square. All right, look at there. Now I can run that through my planer. Get one side somewhat flat and run it through the table saw. Bam, we're ready to go. Look at that. Using a bandsaw would be a lot more accurate way to make this cut, but I just have to make do with what I have. Oh. Oh. Mm. Oh. So I got these uh, run through the table saw and through the planer, and they're looking pretty good. I really like the grain that's appearing here. These colors are super fascinating. There's pinks and browns and yellows. I mean, it's just crazy looking wood and I love it. And they're pretty square right now. I just have a little bit of fine tuning to do. I don't really have the right tools to be doing this, but I can get pretty close and close enough. Now that I've got the three wooden legs well underway, I've got to find a good stone for the fourth leg. Now before picking a rock, you want to make sure you do all the things you're supposed to do to make sure you're picking a good rock. Now that I got the rock, this is about the point where I tell you I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I really don't know how to pick a good rock. Basically my criteria was, does it look good? And are there any major cracks running through it? And I didn't see any of that. It seems pretty solid. Base seems pretty square. It's got this really pretty maroon uh, vein going through it. Got a stone that's very similar. I'm gonna test out some carving here to see how the stone reacts to make sure I don't totally mess this up. I'd like to get this piece trimmed off here so it'll sit more flat. This is about an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch higher. Probably don't want to chisel towards yourself. That's probably a thing, huh? <laughs> All joking aside, it's really important to wear proper protection when working with stone because the dust is actually really bad for your lungs. Basically, I'm getting a couple chunks out of there. It's kind of crazy this looks so much like salt. Oh. <coughs> it was salt. Still a bad idea. 
After a few more minutes, I got this thing pretty stable. It seems to be resting on at least three or four points without wanting to rock back and forth. So now I'll cut the top of this thing. I got this diamond plated blade for about $45 and I'm going to try and cut the marble so we can drop the rails of the bed down into it and inset them. I watched a couple of YouTube videos on this and I think I can do it, but I won't know until I try. So here we go. Now that my workpiece is nice and stable, I can test this thing out. In order to make my cuts really precise, I made this jig so I can get the cut square and perfectly straight. We'll see how it works. So I made this first cut in two separate passes and you'll see later why I don't know if that was the best idea. I'm pretty happy with it. It's a little bit tight, but I, I think I can just sand down the wood and I'd rather it be a little bit tight than loose. So I'm just gonna leave it. I don't know if I try and just skim off 32nd of an inch if I'll just end up chipping it or making it worse. So I'm gonna leave it, rotate the rock, and then do the other cut. If you guys haven't already, it would mean a lot to me if you would go ahead and hammer that subscribe button. So I'm actually really excited about how this turned out. It's not perfect, but it's pretty dang good. I got the bottom of the cut perfectly parallel to the ground, and I got the two cuts really dang close to perpendicular. The cuts get a little bit narrower as I go down because I didn't do it perfectly. So I think I just need to use my shoddy woodworking skills to try and fit the rails in there. I ended up having to notch out the bottom of the rails here because I could only go so deep with my circular saw, but it ended up working okay. I just had to do a little bit more work scribing here. I was so excited with how clean this looked and how tight I got that joint. I was actually kind of surprised. This is the second rail and I decided to fit these in separately before I cut out the notch to fit the one over the other. Taking it out of the stone, I've got a few scrapes here. So I'll kind of circle it with my pencil, sand off my pencil marks, and then it should fit a little bit better. Using a jigsaw definitely isn't the best way to do this, but I don't have a good table saw, nor do I have a crosscut sled, so I just did the best with what I had. Mr. I need that. Mr. I need that. Thank you. So I've been wondering why this wasn't matching up, and it turns out this board is about an eighth of an inch narrower than this one. Guess these one by sixes are different widths from the store and I didn't pay attention. I just assumed they'd be five and a half inches and I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. Either I could zip this through the table saw and narrow up all of them or I could just leave it. I actually kind of like the look of a little bit of a reveal there. In my last video, I announced a giveaway. In order to be fair, I went through the following step. First, I assigned a number to each of the entries. Second, I randomized all those numbers. Third, I numbered my children from most favorite to least favorite. Fourth, I had each of them pick a random number. Eight, seven, 11. Fifth, I had my wife pick a random number between one and three that would correspond with the child's number that we would use. Two. And the winner is Damonello. <laughs> so if you could shoot me an email, we can work out all the details. So in order to get a nice clean edge, I'm gonna route the inside of these rails down a little bit so the plywood will fit right inside of it and it'll look really nice and clean. <laughs> so I've noticed a common theme of this video is me feeling like I don't have the best tool for the job. And here's an example, the poor man's track saw. But you know what? You don't need a bunch of fancy tools. Just get out there and do it. There's a lot of different ways I could cut this. I'm gonna experiment with a few different ones. If I had a cross cut sled for my table saw, I definitely would be using that but I don't, so I'm making do in a couple different ways. We'll see which way works best. You know, there's almost always at least two or three different ways of doing things, and as long as you're being safe and using your tools how they're meant to be used, you can certainly get by without a $1,500 table saw or a huge CNC machine. Using the router is a lot cleaner here. I'm still nervous to get right up to this edge, so I'm gonna use the chisel on there. So I might keep doing that. 
Well, I got better and better through the process. This was the first one, not great. This is the last one, a lot cleaner, better edge here. And I've been messing around with these heavy timbers for a little while. I got this, I've got this spot. Let me just stop it right there. I was obviously way too tired to be trying to explain anything. Basically what I was trying to say was, I've been working really hard on this and I don't know if my wife is gonna like it. Hopefully she's gonna come around. So I marked my drill bit here so I can go in just the right amount, hopefully not too far. So it'll help me get the rope around the corner. Honestly, I don't know how I'm gonna get the rope through, through the corner exactly, but what I do know is I don't want it to go too far. Oh. Ooh. My goal is to keep these holes perfectly circular. That's not doing anything. Yeah, what do I do? Yes, dang it. Doesn't look pretty. I kind of chipped that and <laughs> dented this in here. Uh, I'm going to try something different. Let's see if I can do it on the drill press. I'm hoping doing that got me a good pilot hole. I can stick this spade bit in there and maybe that'll go better. Hmm. Yeah, that's not going to work. Dang it. Ah! I still have to put this at an angle, which would gouge out my hole. Trying something else. Can't get it in there. Ah! Smaller bit. <laughs> now I got this bigger bit. I always seem to do this. I come up with some weird idea, and then I spend way too much time trying to get it to work. Oh my goodness. I'm over it. I'm hopeful, but I'm not expecting too much. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if this works. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, I made the corner. That was easier than I thought it would be. Oh man, the corner's easier than the straightaway. Look at that. Okay, let's talk about shrinkage. I use an online calculator to figure out the shrinkage of this wood based on the species, the moisture content, and the size. This wood is about 18% moisture content, and it told me it's gonna shrink about 5 30 seconds of an inch, or almost four millimeters. So that makes me a little bit worried about this joint here, if it's gonna shrink that much, and it might damage this joint. I'm gonna wait a while before I fully attach this on both sides. First, I'm gonna just attach it on one side, so it'll allow this large post to shrink and not damage the joint. Now, some of these posts are also splitting, and they're going to continue to do so until this wood is dry and so I need to account for that as well. I'm going to finish the ends with something like an anchor seal to prevent some of the splitting but I do know it's going to split and it's just something that we're okay with. Doing this kind of work with green wood or wet wood you just have to account for the cracking. Okay while these bad boys are drying I'm gonna make some simple pine boxes uses drawers to roll underneath the bed. One of Lydia's main requests was that this bed have storage to hold all the junk that accumulates in her sunroom, so hopefully she'll be happy with these. Do you think you guys help me do a wrap on these boxes? Once there was a box and I put a little wrap, I mixed it all up, it was wiggity wiggity whack! I don't even know why I <laughs> ask you. You ready to do your wrap? You mean? No. Yes, I'm gonna cut the fabric. I have a little bit of batting. We're gonna wrap it so it's not like a really hard front. Okay. I'm gonna feel a little bit soft and plush. Guess we're gonna staple now. So when we first talked about it, I showed you the design. You said, I don't like it. <laughs> That's true, I did. Pretty much just shot you down. <laughs> Yep. So this is a little bit different. We changed a few things. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I love it. I think it's great. It turned out way better than I thought it would. The ropes I wasn't very sure about, but I actually like it. I think it lends to the late nautical kind of theme. I love it. I even like the rock. You like the rock too? I even like the rock. The is rock it? that I was like, oh my gosh, that is so dumb. <laughs> 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 it turned out really awesome. I like it. You did a really good job. No, oh, thanks. I'm super happy with it. The real question is, are you gonna watch the kids so I can take naps back here? No, this is my space. Well, it turns out it wasn't a piece of furniture that stood in my way to taking a good nap. 
Thanks so much for watching the project. I didn't get a very long nap, but it was a fun build. It took me almost a month to complete this. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but things don't have to be perfect to be beautiful. Thanks for watching. Find a log or a rock and build something beautiful. Oh, he's a good girl. Oh, he's a good girl.